new possibilities of how we'll live in New South Wales, of where we'll live in New South Wales, what industries might be possible and what, how we'll live socially. And that's, that's the real disruption that I think we'll see you know, 10, 20, 30 years from now. Yep, mobile apps are cool and everything's in the cloud, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but essentially it's these technologies that can disrupt the technologies that transform completely our, our uh, transport experience. So firstly, we've learned that if you share data, there are others with different insights, perspectives and skills who can analyse that data and, and, and unearth truths that you would never have arrived at, right? With their, their experience um, and their skill might lead them to a conclusion that uh, wouldn't have been possible otherwise. So sharing of, of data is always a good thing if people have different perspectives they can bring to it. Data by itself has no meaning. Right? You have to have an intimate knowledge of the semantics around that data in order to apply any meaning to it. So if you just dump terabytes, petabytes of data into the market, a lot of people will just scratch their heads. Um, so I think a much more interesting phenomenon around open data is how you open that through APIs so that people can consume that data, but with some context around it. Transport, obviously understand transport data, and they can apply all sorts of business rules on top of that that help other people integrate transport into their solutions. So, for example, you've seen how in Sydney there's huge investment in a large light railway programme, right? This is impacting the city in, in, in an amazing way. That is really responding to a shift in inner urban living, right? Now, if through data sets in the future, we can predict how people are shifting and living and moving, how they live their lives across Sydney and across New South Wales, then we can put in place transport solutions that get ahead of those societal shifts.